Hey, it's your boy, Big Anthony Neal, coming at you with another Zerker video. Today, we're going to be talking about basically the skill tree in Zerker. I'm going to teach you guys what skills to lock, what skills to take, what skills to not level up all the way. Zerker is a pretty damn weird class when it comes to just skills in general. So I'm just going to show you guys everything from PvE to PvP skill trees. So yeah, let's just jump into it. <laughs> Okay, so let's just start off with a big generality between the both the PvE build and the PvP builds. Across both of the, the skill builds for PvP and PvE, they're almost practically the same just with a couple unlocks that are pertaining to you specifically as your playstyle. So we're just going to go out through this whole video assuming that you literally unlocked every single skill and maxed it out to its highest uh, potential that it could be. And then we're going to go over those those fringe cases, such as, you know, Undertaker, we'll go over that later. But just assume that you unlocked everything and just put a skill point into everything and max it out. Okay, this is this is going to be a basically the starting point. Just fill out everything that you possibly can. Okay, and then we're going to talk about cores later and then skill enhancements. Skill enhancements, I'm going to go over that right now because they're actually used between both builds pretty consistently. So the one that you really want to take as an Awakening Zerker is Feral Stampede. You always want that skill regardless because Feral Rage does literally zero damage and you actually lose out on a lot of DPS in PvP and in PvE. So stay away from Feral Rage, always take Feral Stampede. Now the other two ones is where you could actually argue your point when it comes to what you actually want to run. Me personally, I prefer Acts of Destruction over than Wailing Beast. Because Wailing Beast is just another heal. Zerker's already got enough heals. We don't need another one. So I decided just to go for an extra damaging skill. It's good for PvE. And it's actually really good for PvP. Because it has a down smash on it. So whichever one you want right here. The, the consensus is that whenever you're doing PvP. People want to take this heal. Right? But whenever you're doing PvE. It doesn't mind. It, like People don't mind losing a heal. And having an extra skill for damage. So this one's totally up to you. 100% totally up to you. Now the next one, this one's actually... I haven't really tested out both of these, but the consensus is across the Zerker community that Frenzied Winds is good for PvE and PvP because it's a very quick cancelable way to get your 20% uh, movement speed without having to do a BC1 slash. So, and it also CCs really good in PvP. Uh, Frenzy Tyrant, the last time I used this skill, it was just very underwhelming. It just, it's just basically Ultimate Frenzy Destroyer, but, like, a little bit worse. So, yeah, you can try out this skill, see if it works for you, but I haven't tested out this skill in so long, and they haven't really changed anything about this skill, so it should be pretty underwhelming compared to Frenzied Wings. So, with that out of the way, let's actually move on to the skills that we are going to lock and actually put into a little bit more effort to get to know. So, we're going to start off with PvP next. Okay, so I kind of lied. We're going to start another skill that's also ubiquitous between PvE and PvP. But it's more likely towards PvP because uh, you can't grab mobs. But just in general, Undertaker... The reason why I don't have Absolute Undertaker unlocked is specifically if you read Undertaker number 3, it says maximum HP on damage. It says 10% of max HP dealt as extra damage on Undertaker number 3, right? And if you look at Undertaker, the absolute version, you lose the maximum HP for some reason. I don't know if the developers have, like, not thought about it, that they just forgot to put in the 10% max HP as damage. But, just letting you know, like, health just keeps on getting more and more plentiful over the years. You know, way back then, whenever they put Absolute Undertaker in, health was, like, about 6,000 on the Zerker. Now we're reaching all the way up to, like, 10,000, 12,000 if you have Shies, you know? So that 10% damage, bro, like, it just completely blows the, the, the Undertaker out of the water, regardless of what situation you're in. Me, personally, I sit around 8,000 health whenever I do a PvP build with my my Crystals, man. So that, that's just a lot more damage that you're missing out on if you absolute this. So don't absolute Undertaker. Leave it alone. It's fine. So the next skill that I want to show you guys to lock is a Frenzied... I mean, not Frenzied Destroyer, but it's in the Fierce Strike category. And this skill right here actually messes up your combos because if you like to be lazy like me, this skill actually goes off with a right click. 
So if I unlock this skill right here, whenever I want to do Frenzy Destroyer and I skip a frame or anything like that, I'm gonna throw out a Frenzy Destroyer, I mean a Fear Strike. So it's very, it's very crazy whenever you can do this and then you just hold it and it just goes into Fear Strike. It's very um, not practical whenever you're trying to do split second headbutts, you know, because sometimes if you mess up and you let go of the W key, it will do a Fear Strike and you're kind of just stuck there, you know, doing an extra animation that you were not intending at all, you know? So like that's that's me trying to do shake off, but if I let go of the direction key, bro, it's coming out. And it's very impractical and it will mess up your cancels and it's gonna hinder your mobility. So that's why you always just lock fear strike. The second one is definitely up to you. Ultimate Frenzy Destroyer. This is one that I personally lock because I like to hold down shift while I uh do my frenzy destroyer so I could queue up a headbutt right after. So like for example. Whenever you do Frenzy Destroyer Stomp, I like to do this right here. Hold that shift for that charge headbutt for the combo, right? But the thing is, is that if you are trying to uh, buffer the headbutt, you're not going to buffer the headbutt, and you're just going to sometimes do Ultimate Frenzy Destroyer. So this one's basically up to you. I've seen a lot of Zerkers use Ultimate Frenzy Destroyer in a combo. So if this one's 100% up to you. I'm just very lazy, and I like to fat finger a bunch of stuff, you know? So this one is 100% up to you. Me personally, I lock it for PvP. For PvE, this thing is really good to keep on lock because this is like by far one of your main damage sources whenever your, your awakening combo is offline. So Predatory Hunt. Predatory Hunt, this is down F. This skill just randomly comes out whenever you're trying to do a crab walk or whatever. So you could be doing a crab walk and sometimes the... The, the Predatory Hunt might just come out, you know, like, you, you didn't even mean to do it. And if you skip frames and all that, you're going to do a Predatory Hunt. The Predatory Hunt's actually a very good skill, but I would say just just lock it and hot bar it. Same thing with uh, Falling Rock. Falling Rock is kind of a goofy skill because you can do Predatory Hunt and then it'll cancel into a Falling Rock. And sometimes you'll just do this and then just like... It'll just come out randomly. So I, if you want to really do this, I think you should just hot bar it as well. I've seen some Zerkers use it, but yeah, they always lock it and put it on hot bar. This is one skill to definitely, definitely um mess around with. But yeah, just lock these skills, and if you really want to mess with them, hot bar them. We we already have a lot of hot bar slots, so it's like, why not? A lot of people like to lock Raging Thunder. And I think that's a mistake. A lot of the PvP Zerkers like to lock Raging Thunders. The original Zerkers that used to play a Zerker way back in the day, they leave this unlocked because whenever you do this right here, this is a knockdown. And it goes along with the cooldown of Raging Thunder. So it's a very cool knockdown that hits 360 degrees around you. So like, you don't even have to be in front of them. It hits around you. So it's a really good catch if you want to be like very styleful, you know? So you can like do grab, you could do like a grab into a put down and to, instead of a headbutt you do that sideways slash and the thing is is that if you have a uh, raging thunder locked you can't do this skill you can't do it at all so if i lock raging thunder i can't do it no more I, I literally can't do it no more and the reason why a lot of these zerkers lock this skill for pvp is solely because um friendly destroyer they like to be lazy and if it's locked they can't do a uh a Beyblade, you know? So that's why a lot of Zerkers, they, they lock it. 100% a lot of Zerkers lock it specifically because they want to do Frenzy Destroyer and hold the, the the clicks in. But and then it'll go into a Raging Thunder. So like, for example, you're doing a combo, right? And then you go into a Beyblade and you're just like, damn, I just dropped that combo because of that. And then not only did you put your Raging Thunder on cooldown all the way up here, you can't do the skill no more because it's on cooldown. So yeah, I would say leave it unlocked and just get good with it so you can do catches like this because you're not ever going to know when you're going to use it because it's a knockdown that doesn't go on cooldown unless your Raging Thunder is on cooldown. So that, if this one's 100% up to you. If it's messing you up, you know, lock it. If it isn't, use the power. This is a very strong skill. A lot of people are sleeping on this one. So then you have your Beast Roars, all your Roars right here. These are really good. Just keep them. Time to Rock is amazing. And basically, Tackling Rock, um, what's that called? Weakling, weakling Hunt. This one's also another one that uh, you would need to lock. Because this one will ruin... This skill will ruin your uh, your Crab Walk cancels. Because it, it does share the Shift F, you know? 
So whenever you do your crab lock, you're doing this, right? You're going shift FD, right? Sometimes you want to be lazy and just hold down the shift whenever you do a crab lock, right? So you just want to be lazy, you know? And sometimes it'll just go into a uh, weakling hunt. So yeah, you definitely want to lock weakling hunt 100%. This one will wreck you sideways if you don't know how to do it. And it provides like literally zero protection at all. It's just, uh, it looks cool when you hit people with it, like a drop kick and free awakening. Hell yeah, dude, I love drop kicks. But you already have a drop kick and awakening. It's Titan's, uh, what is it? Titan step. So you don't need one right here. And it's just really good just to lock it so it doesn't ruin any of your movement based skills. The rest of the skill tree, you're, you're kind of you're just chill. You know, we're going down. This one's up to you. Your rage absorptions is definitely up to you. I really, uh, it just depends on what you're trying to do. The attack speed one's great. The critical hit one's great. And yeah, uh, I also would lock rage transfer because sometimes you want to hit your rebombs or your skill enhancements. And they all have like some type of X in it. So X or Z. So I, I would just lock the rage transfer unless you really need it in case you're planning in group fights. But in 1v1s, yeah, you should lock it. Now on to Awakening. Awakening PvP uh, basically just max out the whole tree. Max out the whole tree and you're going to lock a couple of skills, okay? You're going to lock Flame Buster and you're going to keep it at level 1 specifically for the Q buff spam or the Titan Syndrome spam. You definitely want to keep it at level 1 because you cannot do the Titan Syndrome spam if you have it anything above level 1. Do not worry about losing out on damage on your rest of the skills, even though some skills say that it scales off of. It's just very minuscule damage you're losing out on. I would I don't even notice the damage that you lose out on. Just keep it at level 1 if you're PvPing. Whenever you're PvPing, it's up to you. I really don't change it. It's not that much. The only reason that you lock this skill is so you can do the movement like this. I, I made a video about this, so like you guys should definitely look up the Flame Buster Cancel. Whenever you guys have a chance, if you guys don't know why you lock that skill, but you need a hop bar of the skill regardless. So moving down, we have this skill called Flame Bumble, and Flame Bumble is just a really bad skill in general, unless you're doing PvE. I remember all the Zerkers were complaining about this skill getting taken or taking the place of General Disarray. Rest in peace, General Disarray. But we have Flame Pumble now, so we just have to live with it. Flame Pumble completely fucking useless in uh in and pvp pve is a phenomenal skill because it gives you a lot of accuracy but right now pvp just lock it bro because sometimes you want to get uh very lazy whenever you do your combo and you do this and your scatter shot you know split shot combo your seismic blast scatter shot split shot combo goes off of down q and whenever you hit q if it's not on cooldown you're gonna go into a flame pummel and you're just gonna lock yourself out because that skill is uncancelable Flame Pummel is such a disgusting skill because you cannot cancel it. You see, you see how crazy it is. Like I'm trying to like get out of it. I can't get out of it. You have to like. There you go. I got out of it there, but it just takes forever. Like imagine being locked into that. You're just gonna get grabbed immediately because you're just gonna wake up from the combo. So this needs to be locked during PvP at all times. So now. Let's move on to the skill enhancements or the rebombs for the Awakening. Honestly, Titan Blow, there's basically two of them that you want to use, and that is either Ground Lifting or Titan Blow. Honestly, in my opinion, Titan Blow is the better one out of the two because it just gives you just front of, front of guard on your long skill that you can animation linger forever. Or it just allows you to have kind of protected offense, but it, it just depends because every class goes behind your frontal block anyways. It just gives you that extra safety net. And ground lift, honestly, I don't see a lot more people using this no more because they took away general disarray. So this has lost a lot of power compared to how it was back then. So I think in all situations for PvE and PvP, you should definitely 100% take Titan Blow. So with that, you guys, let's move on to PvE. PvE is almost the same thing, just with a couple of skills unlocked, okay? So let's go over that. Okay, so the PvE build is going to be practically the same as the PvP build, and we're just going to go over the consistencies between both of them. So you still want to leave locked all of your movement hinderers, such as, you know, weakling hunt, and then you still got your predatory hunts and your falling rocks, right? You want to keep these locked because these things will just hinder your movement. Movement is by far the same across both of them. You still want to move fast. I also forgot about Fear Strike. Keep that locked. Keep those locked between both builds. 
So if you look at it, Undertaker is still at level three. And then you're practically just going to keep it the same between all of that. Just make sure you keep those skills locked on your pre-awakening and you should be fine. The one skill that I definitely do want to get into is Ultimate Frenzy Destroyer. This skill is amazing in PvE, so you're going to take this and you're going to spam the hell out of it once you have a chance to whenever your Awakening combo is down. So let's move on to Awakening. Awakening, basically it's the same. Level 1 Flame Buster. And you're just going to unlock Flame Pummel and then you're good to go. You know, take your core Titan Blow, and then obviously for your skill enhancements, you, this one's up to you, but make sure you always take Feral Stampede. These two are literally up to you. And with that, you guys, that is basically the whole skill tree for PvP and PvE and the reasons why I take certain things and why they would mess you up in the future. But please feel free to experiment with this. This is not the end-all be-all. The Zerker community is a very vast community that has a lot of ideas that go against the meta. So with that, you guys, experiment. Experiment with this. The information I give you isn't 100% meta. Like, this is all 100% what I think and what is going to help you guys faster so you guys can learn the class, so you guys can be your own technician, so you guys can help the rest of the community. And with that, you guys, stay zerkin', and I'll see you later.